So Grand Slam tonight on TBS. John Moxley, Brian Danielson, obviously for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. I like the idea of Brian Danielson getting the win here. I really do. Uh, I know John Moxley would be well suited for it. You could have both of them beat the crap out of each other if you're dying to see MJF somehow get in there and and and, and cash his chip in. You could definitely have Moxley and Danielson basically murderize each other somehow. You know, take out Claudio and Wheeler Yuta and somehow kind of hold Regal up in the back. And, and you could probably have that happen. It would be a way to go off the show. Again, would it be too overshadowing on Moxley and Danielson? Maybe. Is that a match that I would like to wait for some time later on, probably in November when, at the pay-per-view? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. And I think they would be much better off that way. And I like the, again, I like the idea of Danielson winning because it is a little bit of a, you know, a wrinkle into things, but look at the reaction that John Moxley has gotten every time he's been out there, especially since all of this backstage locker room stuff has happened and because of All Out and what happened after that. You know, the one person that has truly risen to the, you know, top and has been everybody's favorite as far as the crowd goes has been John Moxley. And I think that is the right way to go, especially if you have no plans at all on turning MJF heel or on baby face to me, John Moxley getting the victory here and having what I've said before is as close probably to this for this generation as you can get to Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes. MJF is going to have his fans cheering him just like Ric Flair did. But just like Ric Flair, he's the dirtiest player in the game. And you got a guy in John Moxley who the people have chosen. He may not look like a million bucks, but he can make you a million bucks. So I'm going to pick John Moxley in this match. Got the rest of the card coming up and a whole lot more news from pro wrestling when we get back. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Semper Viva here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. You know we do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day, but if you want us 24-7, you can find us on Twitter. I am at Semper Vivi. The timeline for this show is at W-O-N-F-4-W. The broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. If you love pro wrestling, at Mid-Atlantic Pod. And if you're looking for a quick 8- to 20-minute digestible form of your professional wrestling news in the morning without any any bias, any any nonsense, any commentary attached to it just what you need i can help you out with that go to wrestling news av i do the wrestling news every single morning for you if you can't listen to dave and brian you just don't have that kind of time you're going to have to listen to them later in the day but you want to know what happened in wrestling the day before i got your back i'm here for you so give that a try wrestlingnews.com on twitter at wrestling news av Myself, Brian Solomon, Lou Kippelman, Brian Last. Nice little combination we have here just to give you the news. No nonsense, no BS. So that's enough hype for that. I said I wasn't even going to do this on the show, but when Brian took off, I figured I'd go ahead and slip that one in there. Going to be slipping in a lot of other stuff tonight because it is a busy, busy night in Queens. AEW Dynamite. I just told you that I thought John Moxley, I personally believe that John Moxley would be the right choice over Brian Danielson, although... If you are interested in turning MJF babyface, there's nobody better than Brian Danielson for him to be feuding with in the lead up to that match because, I mean, Brian Danielson can, look, he can call a crowd fickle and they can boo him and then he can turn around and smile and they go nuts and he could probably like break a baby rabbit's legs and people, like, actually Brian Danielson wouldn't do that. He could probably break like, you know, some just random fan's legs and, you know, people would be upset and then you turn around and smile and everybody would be happy again. He is one of the best professional wrestlers of all time, Brian Danielson is. He is absolutely great. Everything he does is fantastic. His technique and most importantly, his psychology and how he can play people. So... If you are looking for a way to try to turn MJF babyface, that would be the way to do it. Although, again, I think that's probably much ado about nothing. AEW World Tag Team Championship, swerve in our glory against the acclaimed. We're going to get a rap from Max Caster. Swerve has gone out there and and gotten in the way with his, his big smile, his big heel smile, the same one he had on his face when he was beating up Nick Wayne at the Defy show, and he lifted his head up with that big smile on his face. He's out there with Keith Lee, and 
He won't be smiling, I don't think, at the end of the night. This would be the time to change those tag team titles. It does not have to be forever. If you want to keep swerving our glory together as a team, you can absolutely have them stay in the race, have them feud with the acclaimed, and win those title ba- titles back later on down the line. But to me, the acclaimed is going to be over gigantically. People are going to be going nuts. This just feels like a good time to go ahead and change that title. Because to be honest with you, we have one title that's being vacated. And when I look at the rest of the card, there's probably not going to be any other title changes. So this can be the big title switch before the vacated title gets filled with the acclaim coming out on top. Because there's the ROH World Championship, and I know Chris Jericho said he'd like to go for the Ocho against Claudio Castagnoli, but I just don't think that's going to happen. I think Claudio's going to get the victory. I think it's going to be an outstanding match because it's Claudio and Chris Jericho. So I think it's going to be really good, but I see Claudio coming out on top in that one. Same thing with the AEW Interim World Women's Championship. Tony Storm against Athena, against Britt Baker, against Serena Deeb. I like Serena Deeb, technically as a worker. Is she over right now? She's not. Athena, I like as a personality. Uh, She's she's good. I don't know if the people are really behind her. We know the people are really behind Britt Baker, but they want to see Britt Baker in the mix with Jamie Hayter. And unless you're going to do that, I wouldn't be switching this title right now. I know Thunder Rosa is not very popular, and she's still in the background, and God knows how long she's going to be out for. So you could make a move with Tony Storm right now and put the title on Baker and have Baker and Hater kind of go after each other for it, but I just don't think now's the time. It's not going to help Tony Storm at all if she goes out there and just loses. I think her winning just a good match that doesn't have any interference, maybe even over Britt Baker, so that Jamie Hayter has something in her pocket where it's like, what are you talking about? You just lost to the champion in front of all these people on Dynamite. That would be the way I would go with it, but we'll, we'll have to see. Bottom line is, no matter what, I think Tony Storm's walking out of there with the title. Same thing with the AEW All-Atlantic Championship pack against Orange Cassidy. I guess you could have Orange Cassidy win the All-Atlantic title, but... Why? (laughs) Why? I mean, and this is nothing against Orange, too. I mean, this is a showcase to me. It's a showcase for both of them, but especially for Pac as the All-Atlantic champion. You know, he had a good match against Kip Sabian. It was nothing to write home about. I think he can have a lot more of of a fun match with Orange Cassidy. We've seen them in there with each other before, and we know the type of file that Pac has built up as far as Orange Cassidy, the character goes, at least in in storyline form. So... Those two going at it with the Lucha Brothers and, you know, the rest of Death Triangle and the rest of the best friends maybe getting into it. I'm going to be good with that. I think Pac gets the victory there. Pac gets the victory there. All I have is a few questions. Oh, good. My favorite. Is it duplex or suplex? Or is it both? A wrestling move where you (laughs) grab your opponent and throw him backwards through the air is a suplex. A housing complex with two homes built connected as a duplex. Yeah, it's never been duplex, Granny, but you've you've said this now for 15 okay, years, so we just I, yeah, let, yeah. It, let it go. Yeah. So I thought once and for all, I want to know which it is. So it's duplex and not suplex, right? No, a it's, suplex it's is suplex a suplex <laughs> and not duplex. Oh, okay. <laughs> duplex is a housing development, Granny. Ulysses S. Grant. Battle we, we We definitely read these. Skip forward no, a few pages. No, no, no. Okay, no. all right, all right, go ahead. We didn't do this one. Okay. Yeah, this person says we did. This person says we did it. I protest. There must be two of them then. (laughs) I protest. He wrote the same one twice. (laughs) I like this one about Grant so much. I'm going to put it in the book twice. I'm telling you, I wasn't back this far. Okay, fine. Read another one. Yeah, Everyone's saying we read these last week, Granny. Big deal. (laughs) Who cares, everybody? But all the researchers today. Are you reading the book the wrong way? No. Okay. What do you think I am? I don't know. You keep saying you're going back. (laughs) Why would we go back when reading a book? We're supposed to go forward. Maybe what happens, Granny, is you put the bookmark in, and then when you open it to that page, you start reading the ones we already read. Maybe the bookmark should go on the next page. No. Okay. (laughs) What do they say in court? I object. I object. Objection, Your Honor. Yeah, that's right. I didn't read that again. Overruled, Granny. You did. (laughs) All right. Anything else, Granny? You're guilty. <laughs> well. <laughs> Go ahead.
go to go to jail. Your guilty was the high spot of the week. Oh, she shut me off. No, oh, you're right here. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. There was some weird rumbling going on, like uh -oh. she, she's unplugging her own cord there. I think you unplugged I the cord. I can't hear you. you, you can you hear me? Can you hear me? I I'll message you. I'll message you. I hear you now. Oh, now you do? Yeah, now I hear. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Ah! All right. If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety-nine cents per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.